Usman Jang got off to a pretty slow start for the NBL's New Zealand Breakers, but he turned it around in the second half in ways that I definitely didn't see coming. His combination of size, fluidity, playmaking, and defensive potential, along with the stark contrast of ups and downs, make him one of the class's most interesting prospects. Now Zhang really did have one of the more impressive in-season turnarounds I've seen. Now you can just look at the stats to see how much different and effective a player he was. Some of this had to do with team injuries but he was more aggressive, confident and simply better as an offensive player taking wild jumps as a scorer, shooter and driver and he really did earn that draft stock boost. But getting into his game, defensively there's a lot to like. Now he wasn't without some obvious growing pains as a teenager heading into a high level professional league, but at 6'9", 6'10", with the willingness and ability to stick with wings and guards on the perimeter, and also make some impressive reads and help position, he really caught my eye even when the minutes were inconsistent and his offense was severely lacking. Karen blocked, followed by Usman Dieng. Play with Faruba Tarangi. Now he's in red time, and he's running. Weeks. McDaniel, got to let it go. Stayed with the play. It's his first block of the game. Had a happy time with in Bendigo last year when they played Melbourne United. Move the ball like he's got now and play. Hand off to Harvey. Counted by the longer arms of Usman Dieng. Sure is. Three point ball game. Trust you're enjoying our coverage wherever you may be watching the Hungry Jacks NBL. He wasn't without the classic young player faults, but you could see him reading the floor, making big time rotations and plays as a help defender. I think he's ahead of the curve in this aspect and while the numbers were fairly low, there's reason to believe he'll be more impactful in the stocks and deflection department as he continues to grow. Oh, shock like they're flirting with it again. There's no Josh Adams who's a little bit of work done. Cut to his lip in the opening quarter. Pulls up for three. Start the breakers. Deng, Siva, good D. Deng went back in. Match up against each other. Tell you a little bit about both. Machado trying to weave his around this defense, but Jing again. Yeah, it's going to lead to a nice little throwdown. What? Here's a chance, Wilson Jing, to show some athleticism. Fifth birthday today. A shout out to Kev. Good news here as well, Johnny Binder pacing the sideline. Gets himself a shot he liked. Unfortunately, no good. Now it's Jing the other way. Wants the push. Kick. Now why? Jing. It's Noy. Got him going the wrong way. It's always greener. I agree. Jing crosses over Pinder. Gets to the bucket. <laughs> this is a... That can shoot threes to just put the three in the pocket. The next thing that'll really catch your eye is his passing and play in the pick and roll as he does some special things you wouldn't assume if you were just looking at the assist averages or those that end up on highlight reels. He made some advanced reads using fakes and manipulating the low man like clockwork and I really like his pace and patience to allow plays to develop here. He also has some live dribble skips, a couple dump offs and other exciting looks in that half court. Jing had a run off. Jing baseline. He's into double figures on four of ten. Best But not quite wary, I think he would have hoped. Wanted to fire the three. Jing through. Chi. He's now got ten points in this quarter. Out of the 22 is to go. I'm okay. Shout out to him, though. Nice play. Oh, yeah. Break. Jing, 19 points. He was 6 of 6. He's now 7 of 11, so has cooled off. 475 in round 9. It was 83.59. There's low. Yeah, but we watch 
Try to wipe that slate clean and do it all over again. Ken looks inside low. GLA. Save your cooks. Big law. Somebody's not making it. JLA way. Dan Schmier's the one now that's uh, up and about on a regular basis. New Zealand's credit, they were able to work their way back into it. Turnovers. Weren't able to pick up on that and get some help. We ended up getting it back. Jeng, little float, extra nice. pass. The ball's moving for the breakers. They now this is the area that I'd say we saw the most growth out of him within this season, and that's his self-creation, especially on the perimeter. His handle is what makes things work. He's not super advanced and it still needs some tuning, but it gets the job done. And his fluidity as an athlete really shines in this regard. But the confidence and effectiveness is so wildly night and day from the first half to the second that it almost seems like a different player. He just started backing it out and isoing dudes like it was nothing and while it's still a work in progress, the combination of what he did in the second half and the flashes prior to the NBL is going to have many teams willing to bet on him and look to get even more out of those between the legs and hang dribbles he so often used. In the first half, but if they're going to play in single coverage in the block, you've got to give him some looks. Breakers will play Sunday in Bendigo, country Victoria. That longer leash where both folks like Scott Roth and even we're looking at Jeng now with guys like Basson and Will McDowell wide out. We don't, we're a bit short. Now to some areas he can improve. Getting stronger, adding mass, and becoming more adept at handling contact is paramount for him heading into the NBA. He's only 18, he already looks better than he did a year ago, but this needs to be one of his main focuses, if not the number one. He's listed at 216 pounds, which I find to be really interesting, considering that's 20 to 30 more than Brandon Ingram, the Zaire Williams, Jaden McDaniels, but it definitely has a lot to do with strength and force generation than just pure mass. He has great length and routinely showed he can get to the rack in one dribble and finish softly over the rim. There were just some obvious things he's going to need to fix to be more effective here. So ball and the, when you got the two superstars, they're able to take advantage. We spoke. Phoenix controlling the second quarter. Jeng. Jeng. Saw that he was guarded by the end to see from them. They average 87 a game, which is fourth in the competition. With Jeng penetrating efficient last year in, in France as he attacks them. They do a better job of keeping the offense out of the paint. That's a nice One area I think he can improve defensively is his screen navigation. Now this is a tough task that deserves patience at that size, but he can improve his recognition, getting skinny, and avoid dying on screens and getting put out of plays as often. Right, they just keep going with it. And yes, right now, you see Jalen Adams going under. As they're trying to go under. A little over two minutes out from three-quarter time. Here's Foxwell on cue to the... Munford at the moment, nine points, four assists. Goes into the keyway, and his little floaters are the ones. Oh my goodness! Master. Step back. And he has the obvious tools, length, movement, ability, but there was many a time where that was negated by his frame and lack of real functional strength. There were possessions where he did absolutely everything right, was in perfect position, but was playing discarded on the way to the bucket. I hate to compare the two and they are extremely different, but hopefully you can sort of see the difference between a guy like Chet and Usman's issues on his front, just for a noteworthy example. One more score, might just take care of the result, Peatley. Uncontested a five point game. Cotton. Wagstaff read it nicely off the rim. Newly for three. This is everything, this Peatley. Ding. Say all eyes on Pinder while I sneak back up top to the Frenchman. And my question is, Joe Chi is looking 
like a completely different player. He still needs to keep working offensively, being more consistent and a more reliable option, whether that's improving as a ball handler, his footwork and shot preparation, or taking what the defense is giving him. He has the tools, but he needs to keep putting it all together. Jink for three. Jink pulls the trigger. That doesn't look like a 50 Three-point shooter to me. Here's Seaver again. All the help. Kick it out. Dieng. Regardless of what happens, they only need to win a few more. Pretty much it. Exceeded block. expectations. So got it. Size can throw over defenses. Jeng outside. He's Jeng. Great pass. Team. This is number five for Della Vadova too. There are still some questions that surround him in terms of how long that physical progression might take or if he could fully unlock the pick and roll and passing potential by becoming enough of a scoring threat or how much stock to put in the first half of the season as opposed to the second. But I think the talent is fairly obvious with him and a lot will come down to his work ethic and intangible. Now that's not information that we're ever really privy to so we can't and won't speak on it but it is especially important for a prospect right like there but he can't let that spill over to what happens on the defensive end easy with a lot of the top prospects i struggle to set these rough ceilings and floors especially when you don't know someone's makeup but i would say somewhere in the high level start of the borderline all-star range and then floor wise more of a back end rotational wing feels right his stock has taken wild jumps forward lately and i say there's a possibility he goes as high as the late lottery down into the late first round and i'd most like to see him end up in a place like oklahoma city san antonio or houston Good shot. How much is too much and too little? Well, that first really might. They didn't miss that. Marcel Blazer. Here's Batum inside. Hicks and Jordan. Bring it up. Butler, Griffin, Jordan, Green, and Bledsoe out there for the covers of Red Red. What play he wanted to run. Another turnover. Batum by Cole. Usman Zhang's second half of the season restored a lot of the pre-NBL feelings and it was great to see him do it against grown men in a high level league. He's going to need to place a hard emphasis on improving his body while continuing to develop as a shooter and scorer, but the road is there for him to become a high impact wing who makes plays on both ends in the NBA. Gonna be the first, so I'll forever be the second. Who rep the Murph Park is something you ain't got a question. They like, I'm grown up, better than we expect. You can see the ball, my show.